The 2013 version of the NDAA is now headed to President Barack Obama's desk. If you have followed the National Defense Authorization Act and the undoing of constitutional rights to trial that the NDAA is responsible for, then you've probably heard of something called the Feinstein-Lee Amendment. It's an amendment that was supposed to prohibit indefinite detention for U.S. citizens. The big question, does it do that? This is Full Disclosure. Weeks ago, as part of the effort to combat indefinite detention, an amendment was offered by Senators Dianne Feinstein and Mike Lee, the Feinstein-Lee Amendment. It was backed by Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, one of the strongest opponents to indefinite detention. Senator Paul issued this statement about why he supported the Feinstein-Lee Amendment, saying, quote, The bill this year contained the amendment I supported, which sharply limited the detention power and eliminated it entirely for American citizens in the U.S. While it's only a partial victory, it was a big victory, particularly compared to what passed last year. Even so, I will continue to fight to protect anyone who could possibly be indefinitely detained. So the big question, does the Feinstein-Lee Amendment do what Senator Paul claims that it does? Let's start by taking a look at the amendment. It's called Section 1033, Prohibition on the Indefinite Detention of Citizens and Lawful Permanent Residents. It goes on to say Section 4001 of Title 18, United States Code, is amended. An authorization to use military force, a declaration of war, or any similar authority shall not authorize the detention without charge or trial of a citizen or lawful permanent resident of the United States, apprehended in the United States, unless an act of Congress expressly authorizes such detention. That sounds good, right? Well, that's exactly the problem with the Feinstein-Lee Amendment. All it does is sound good. Let's take a look at this one step at a time, beginning with the title of that section. Section 1033, Prohibition on the Indefinite Detention of Citizens and Lawful Permanent Residents. Just because the section is titled Prohibition does not make it Prohibition. According to Jeff Lewis with the Intolerable Acts Action Center's legal team, the U.S. Supreme Court has already ruled on this issue, that a section title is not law, which means prohibition in the title means nothing. So if this is prohibition, then prohibition can't just be in the title. It must be in the substantive text of this amendment. Is it there? Well, no, it really isn't. Take a look again. An authorization to use military force, a declaration of war, or any similar authority shall not authorize the detention without charge or trial of a citizen or lawful permanent resident of the United States, apprehended in the United States, unless an act of Congress expressly authorizes such detention. Clearly, nothing in that clause states that the president or the executive branch are actually prohibited from indefinite detention. In fact, it merely says that Congress has not authorized detention without charge or without trial, unless, unless they choose to authorize that kind of detention. But see, here's the problem, because Congress doesn't have to authorize anything, because the last two presidents, Bush and President Obama, have already exercised the indefinite detention authority. And that's a major problem because the executive branch isn't asking for authorization. They don't believe that they need it. So what you need to know here is that the Feinstein-Lee Amendment isn't even in the 2013 version of the NDAA because when the Senate and the House bills were reconciled, that amendment was left out. Now you might be saying, well then why are we even talking about this? It's not even important. Well, actually, it is important for two major reasons. Number one, many senators voted for this amendment, including Senator Paul, claiming that this was a step in the right direction, when in fact the Feinstein-Lee Amendment was a step to nowhere. The fact is, this amendment did nothing to actually protect U.S. citizens from indefinite detention. But secondly, Americans need to be aware that the president or the executive branch doesn't believe that Congress needs to authorize any of its behavior. If Congress is serious about actually stepping up and combating the executive branch over this issue, prohibiting indefinite detention, and protecting the constitutional right to a trial, well then quite frankly, Congress needs to create an amendment in the NDAA that would actually, specifically, 
and substantively prohibit the executive branch from being able to use the power of indefinite detention. Until Congress does that, no amendment will be effective at all. And that is full disclosure. As we've been telling you, the 2013 version of the NDAA is now headed to President Barack Obama's desk. Now, we've already covered for you the Feinstein-Lee Amendment, broken down for you why this is important to understand for Americans. But there is another part of the bill that actually is headed to the president that is aimed at protecting Americans from indefinite detention, at least protecting their right to habeas, the right to a trial. But does that amendment actually do anything to protect your rights? We take a look in full disclosure. It is called the Gomert Amendment. Section 1029 is what it's now become in the 2013 version of the NDAA. It was written by Texas Congressman Louis Gomert. It's supposed to protect the rights of U.S. citizens if they are arrested and suspected of terrorism, protecting their right of habeas. Here's how that section actually reads. Nothing in the authorization for use of military force or the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2012 shall be construed to deny the availability of the right of habeas corpus or to deny any constitutional rights in a court ordained or established by or under Article 3 of the Constitution for any person who was lawfully in the United States when detained pursuant to the authorization for use of military force and who was otherwise entitled to the availability of such right or rights. So the fix proposed here is pretty simple. According to the Gomert Amendment, or now Section 1029 of the NDAA, nothing in that law shall be construed to deny the right of habeas or the right to trial for American citizens who might be arrested under the NDAA. Again, pretty simple stuff here. The problem, though, according to Dan Johnson with Panda or People Against the NDAA, is in the guarantee to a trial in an Article III court. Dan says, quote, The Gomert Amendment only says that if you get a trial in an Article III court, that you won't be denied your constitutional rights in that court. But there's no guarantee you get any trial, let alone one, in an Article III court. This language is deceptive in that it implies Congress can pick and choose who gets constitutional rights. It also does not recognize or protect the constitutional rights of U.S. citizens traveling abroad. So the Gomert Amendment, or Section 1029 of the NDAA, does nothing to protect your right to a trial in an Article III court. In fact, keep in mind, lawmakers have already declared that the U.S. soil is a battlefield which means that anyone detained under the 2001 AUMF, or Authorization for Use of Military Force, that was then supported and strengthened by the 2012 NDAA, would actually be subject to military trial, not trial in an Article III court. Anyone detained under the 2001 Authorization for Use of Military Force, as modified by the 2012 NDAA, is subject to the laws of war, simply based on suspicion of terrorism charges by the president or anyone under his command. That means they would not have to be tried under an Article III court. They could be tried under an Article I court, also known as a military tribunal or a court-martial. The 2009 Military Commissions Act gave military commissions slash tribunals, also known as court-martials, the statutory authority to choose whether or not they have jurisdiction. In layman's terms, that means a military commission, an Article I court, can decide themselves whether or not they will take jurisdiction over cases involving AUMF slash NDAA covered persons. So what you need to know here is that the Gomert Amendment, or Section 1029 of the NDAA, does nothing to protect your right to trial. In fact, it does not guarantee that if you were arrested on charges of terrorism that you would ever get a trial you can still be indefinitely detained under this section. Not only that, but if you do happen to get a trial, it may be a military tribunal, an Article I court. Nothing in here guarantees you get an Article III trial. But assuming that you do finally get into an Article III court, if that is the case, according to this amendment, that your rights would then be honored unless otherwise entitled. And those words otherwise entitled, are the key to all of this. What the executive branch is saying is that you are not otherwise entitled, according to the executive branch under President Bush and under President Obama. 
If you are a suspected terrorist, you have no right to a trial because you're an enemy combatant. And that is full disclosure.